Hi, Mr. Zappone here, and this video is going to be on pressure and depth, and really just going to be how do you calculate pressure at a given depth in a fluid. We're going to derive a formula for it and use it. Uh, this picture is me. I have that device. I did record a video of it, but um, I recorded it like in still picture or something, so it just didn't come out right, and I'm not redoing it because it's a very simple demo. Uh, basically, you have a column of water, and there's basically spigots where the water comes out, and notice that the bottom one... Uh, follow my cursor right here the water is shooting out further than the middle one which is only reaching here and that's even further than the top one which is coming from there so um, basically it's a pressure issue um, pressure increases with depth so there's more water pushing down towards the bottom so it's pushing that water out further so this is just a little simple demo of what we already know we know if we swim deep down in a pool you know the pressure our head starts squeezing our submarines feel tremendous pressure but this is a little demonstration of that so all right so on to some physicsy stuff uh, let's say you have a tank of water um, and let's say you have some rectangular board it's just basically suspended in the middle of this water column and and we want to come up with a formula where we could calculate the pressure acting on this and we know pressure is force over area but this is going to be a difficult formula to work with what's the force how do we get the weight of the water is it the mass of gravity how much water is there what's the volume of the water so you'd have to figure out a lot of things to figure that out so we're going to come up with a different version of this formula that's a little bit easier to use uh, maybe the process getting there would be a little annoying but the end formula we're going to have is going to be very very easy to use and we're going to like that formula so the pressure is force over area. Um, we do know that the further down you go, there is much more water pushing down on this than there is over here. So there's more pressure here. Um, there's greater pressure at this depth. The only thing changing here is the amount of water, the depth. Um, so we're going to come up with a formula. All right, so we know pressure equals force divided by area. So... Um, we also know that the force is due to the weight of the water pushing down on the board. All this water in this area is pushing down on this. So the weight of that water is what causes the force. So the force is, of course, the mass of that water times gravity. It's the weight of it. And we could calculate the surface area of any object um, there. That's, it's certainly capable of doing it. Um, but let's go a little bit further. We're going to plug that in now. Pressure is force divided by area, the force just happens to be mass times gravity. So pressure is mass times gravity over area. All right, let's keep going. Density is mass divided by volume. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for mass, which means we have to bring the V up. You multiply this side by V on the right, you multiply this side by V. So mass equals density times volume so now we had this formula right here and i'm going to take this m which equals rho v density times v and i'm going to plug this in for m i'm going to plug in this rho v for the m here because that's what mass equals and we end up with pressure equals density times volume times gravity divided by area all right following me it's not super complicated there's a lot of steps here though i'm not asking you to memorize it for sure um but there isn't there isn't really any difficult math in this um it's pretty straightforward sub plug and chug substitutions um we know that volume right here there's a volume is length times width times height we have a rectangular column of water pushing down on it um we also know that area the area of that board is just length times width or you know the two dimensions of the board the water is pushing down so we can plug these in um, we had pressure our pressure equals density times volume times gravity over area and we're just gonna plug in length width and height for volume and we're gonna plug in length and width for area and the cool thing is well lengths cancel widths cancel and voila we have a wonderful formula we can now work with I'm not again not asking you to do this out or memorize it but this is physics so we do got to figure out where formulas come from and this is one of the easier derivations so pressure in any fluid is just equal to rho gh 
Rho is the density of the liquid, and we know that. We know water is about the density of one gram per centimeter cubed, or a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. If we know the density of any liquid, we know G, G is 9.8 or 10, um, and if we know how far down we are, H the depth, um, basically, because this is the depth in this case, we can calculate the pressure. Um, and that's a pretty easy formula to work with. So pressure equals rho GH. The P is the pressure in pascals, or newtons per meter squared, same difference. Um, rho is the density of the liquid. It's got to be in kilograms per meter cubed. You cannot use a density in grams per centimeter cubed. And the value for gravity in meters are, are, are in meters per second squared, or height in meters, and a, and a density in centimeters. That stuff doesn't work out. Um, our units have to stay consistent. So we know the density of fresh water is about 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Salt water deviates from about 1020 to 1050 kilograms per meter cubed. Ocean water is not very compressible. Um, water is not very compressible. When we use water displacement to measure volume, the things we assume that. But when you're at the deep, deep ocean levels, some things that don't happen under normal um, circumstances you know, start happening. Water does compress a little bit. It becomes a little bit denser towards the bottom of the ocean because there's enormous pressures and forces evolved, involved. Um, so keep that in mind. So salt water, you know, has a density value, but it does change a little bit as you get deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, but salt water is denser than fresh water. That's why we're able to float an egg in salt water, whereas it sinks in fresh water. And gravity is 9.8 or 10. Uh, we're not building a submarine or anything or an underwater base. So whether we use 9.8 or 10, it's not really going to matter that much. We're not taking into account the, you know, the temperature of the liquid, how it could change density or whatnot. So we can just use 10 if we want for gravity to keep it simple. Um, and H is you, not you, but your depth from the surface. H is just how far. If this is the top of the water, well, how far down are you from the top? That is the H value, is your depth from the surface in meters. Um, so let's just look at a practice problem. A submarine is at a depth of 1,200 meters in salt water with an average density of 1030 kilograms per meter cubed. Calculate the pressure acting on it. Well, we're going to list our variables. We know that we want to figure out pressure. Calculate the pressure. Um, sorry, my dryer keeps uh, beeping. It's getting a little bit annoying. Um, but anyway, density equals 1030 kilograms per meter cubed, G is 10, and the H is 1,200. Well, the formula is pressure equals rho GH. We have all these variables. We just basically throw them in and multiply them all together. And we get an enormous pressure, 12,360,000 pascals. So that's all you do with this formula. Pressure equals rho GH. It's just a plug and chug formula uh, after you derive it. So to extend this, if one atmosphere of pressure is 101,325 pascals, how many atmospheres of pressure is that? So basically, you got 12 million pascals of pressure at 1,200 meters down in the water, and one atmosphere is about 101,000 pascals. So how many atmospheres of pressure is that? Um, this is a division problem. Uh, if you're a little confused by this, well, if I ask you how many $20 bills is, are there in $100? Well, you take the $100. How many 20s will fit into it? 100 divided by 20 is 5. Well, what pressure do we have? We have like 12 million. And how many of those 100,000 atmospheres will fit in it? You take the 12 million and you divide it by the 100,000 number. Or you use unit conversions. If you know how to do this, you're starting with pascals. You're converting pascals into atmospheres. These units will cancel because you have a pascal on the top and a pascal in the bottom, the uh, numerator and denominator, and you're left with just atmosphere. So this number divided by that number, and you end up with 122 atmospheres. That's a lot of pressure um, when you're down there. That's 122 atmospheres pushing down on you. And technically, you got to add one more, because when you're underneath the water, the water's pushing down on you. But what's pushing down on the water? One atmosphere. So really, the total pressure would be 123 atmospheres at that point. Um, and I just want to talk about hypoxia before we end this video. Um, it's basically a lack of oxygen. It happens in Long Island Sound, which is due south of us. Um, every year, basically during the summer, um, oxygen runs low in Long Island Sound, and a lot of marine life dies off. Um, this is basically happens in a lot of estuaries. What you have is rivers bringing fresh water over salt water, and because salt water is denser, they kind of stratify 
Um, you have fresh water on the top, salt on the bottom. They don't really fully mix unless there's um, stormy weather and whatnot. So in the summer, when you have calm weather, there's like a really good gradient there. There's a tight stratification to those two water types. Um, and when you have warmer water, you should know there's less dissolved gases in it. When you heat up something, if you ever start a boiling water, as soon as you start heating it up, you can see tiny little bubbles coming out of it. That's not boiling. Those are dissolved gases coming out. Think of like soda. Soda has carbon dioxide in it. Um, all liquids have dissolved gases in them. When it's warmer, there's less. And these marine organisms, they need that dissolved oxygen um, for their basic functions. So every year, we get these mass die-offs of aquatic life because of hypoxia um, because there's a lack of oxygen in the water due to the stratification. This is intensified by human um, induced pollution. Some phosphorus and mainly nitrogen runoff in like our wastewater treatment plants, fertilizers. All this nitrogen ends up in these rivers and they all end up in the ocean, the Long Island Sound and our region. And what it does is it causes a phytoplankton boom. Um, and phytoplankton, they just like, boom, they just go crazy. Um, they grow like crazy and then they die. And when they die, bacteria decompose them and that bacteria uses up whatever little oxygen there is in the process and even more marine life dies. And I'm not talking a little bit, I'm talking a lot. There's a lot of uh, dead fish and marine life every year. Some of it's natural due to meteorological um, and, you know, oceanic conditions, just the way things work. Um, but it happens every year. It happens in the Gulf of Mexico and our pollution is adding to it. So I just thought this was a little interesting. I am going to post a PDF of a paper I wrote on hypoxia in Long Island Sound when I was in college. It's just a little research paper. You don't have to read it, but it's there if you want to, you know, read about an environmental issue that does affect our neck of the woods. Um, so that's pressure with depth. Hope you enjoyed this video. Mr. Spong.